I don't think I've ever really told anyone this before, but I remember, I don't know what happened or whatever, but something prompted me one night to pray to be light-skinned with curly hair at seven. I don't know if I, I don't know if I maybe saw something that made me feel like being that way was better. Maybe I saw something at school that happened. Maybe I saw something on TV. I can't even pinpoint where that came from, but I do remember having that having that prayer like that young. My earliest thoughts about race and skin growing up. My mother was dark skin, and I remember um, a lot of people often confusing myself being my belonging to my aunt because my aunt was fairer skin. And so a lot of times people would ask like, wait, is that your mom? Which often left, you know, my mom feeling a kind of way because she's like, these are my kids. But people often associated them with my aunt because she was a fairer skin. So that was my first time realizing that, wait, people actually treat you differently, um, you know, when you're of a different complexion. Growing up, I grew up in a pretty homogenous community. Um, everyone was pretty black and the only white people we really saw were police officers and teachers. Um, so that's how I contextualize race. I'm Vince D. Um, I'm a marketer here in Atlanta. Um, you know, they were the other people. Um, and for me, uh, race wasn't that apparent until I started to go to school and interact with with people and learn a little bit of history. I thought that dark skin was not seen as beautiful and that light skin was seen as more beautiful. I'm Christina Lowe and I'm a singer songwriter. Um, growing up in a household, obviously with a black family, uh, you know, you hear a lot of jokes and things about this, about skin color and that kind of sets the stage. But then when I went to elementary school, I learned that some of those things are true. My earliest thoughts about race and skin growing up were I, I envied uh, being, being white. I envied uh, the demeanor and the ability to walk through life. I'm Enoch King and I'm an actor. And just seemed like uh, white people around me seemed to enjoy themselves a little bit more than I did. Just the shows and movies that I saw on TV. I didn't see a lot of representation uh, for people of my color. And, you know, growing up, being black, being darker skin, uh, brought a lot of insults and uh, hurt, uh, hurt feelings from people who look just like me. My favorite singer was Mariah Carey. I'm Phoenix James, and I am a local artist here in Atlanta, but I'm also a photographer. And so when I saw Mariah Carey and I saw like the whole controversy, I'm 35. So when I when she came out, I was what, like six, five or six years old. But I kept seeing a lot of controversy about her skin. And I used to think like, oh, she's black. I didn't realize she was black. But then I realized that she looked a lot like you know, family members that I had. And so I didn't really think it was like a big deal probably until I got in school and I started noticing that the light-skinned girls were more popular, you know, things like that. But I noticed that even at like seven and eight years old. Uh, I have twin brothers that are seven years older than me um, and they are fraternal. Um, and oddly enough, one is on one side of the spectrum, extremely light skin, and the other one is on the other side of the spectrum and darker skin. Um, I grew up literally calling them white chocolate and dark chocolate. Uh, so I would have to say that that was kind of my first introduction to um, skin color. My earliest thoughts about race probably came through the television screen. I'm Tahir Register, the founder of National Melanin Day. I lived in a pretty predominantly black neighborhood in Newark, New Jersey, so I didn't really too much think about race other than like what school and my parents taught me. But I remember watching, you know, Martin and UPN 9, that was the channel in Newark, UPN 9, and just watching, you know, all of our shows, Martin, 
Eventually, that's a raven. Soul food, girlfriends, the Parkers, you know, I saw a lot of black people, but there was separation. Whenever I would watch things like Friends or Little House on the Prairie or <laughs> like whatever other show, I would not see us in it, but I would see white people in our show. So that was my first, even as a child, I was like in elementary school. So that was my first time realizing that there was a clear separation. Is choosing to like or love someone based on their skin a preference or a prejudice? This is an interesting one. I am Jasper Brooks. I am a filmmaker and an educator. I think that it is a mixture of both. It is kind of an 80-20 thing for me. Um, I'd say 80% of it is uh, prejudice. Um, but I do say the exception is um, your preference, it, okay. I think it is a preference to uh, date or not to choose to date or not to date um, your oppressor. So I feel like it, it is not a prejudice if you have a preference to not date your oppressor. I'm Jessica Myers, real estate developer and entrepreneur. I do notice the color complex, you know, sometimes having a fair skin with a, a darker skin, you know, is generally the pairing because my mom was darker skin and then my dad was fair skin. So they came together and had me. And then, you know, my husband, his father was fair skin and his mom was brown skin. So they came together and had him and, and we kind of come together and make one big swirl. But um, I, I don't think that I dated based on that being a preference, just that it was who I fell in love with. Choosing someone to like or love based off of their skin color is absolutely a prejudice. You're prejudging. You've, you've chosen to block out anything, their, their voice, their, their love of dogs, their, their, their Christianity or religion, whatever, you've chosen to completely decide not to even entertain a person based off of the color of their skin, that's prejudice, period. There's no ways around that. I believe it's a little of both. I feel like it's a preference based on a prejudice. Um, sometimes people, even I'm guilty of this myself, um, feel like if they date someone of uh, another race, basically not black, that they'll be uh, treated a better way. My preference is black men. I'm with a black man right now. I am Anyana, or some call me DJ Wild Yana because I'm a DJ, but that's not because he's black. <laughs> it's because I love him and he's great, but would I go outside of my race to date? It's not my preference, but maybe if, you know, that was a thing to do, but I'm happy, so. <laughs> but uh, I think it depends on the reason because I do hear other people um, say that dating outside of their race kind of makes them feel more like accepted. It makes them feel like they're beating the race race, if you will, like they're they're beating, uh, beating being black maybe, I don't know. It's all, it's, I've always heard of the reason not being just for love, but it depends on who the person is. I think when I was younger, it was definitely more of a prejudice like, Lord knows I may get in trouble for saying this, but since my dad was lighter, I thought that that was the type of man that I had to date. I've always seen, you know, people in my family like the lighter men and never the darker men. There aren't that many, you know, dark men that I have seen in our family. Um, they're always, you know, fair skin or a little bit lighter or just way off, off to the side. So for me, growing up, I looked at it more of like a prejudice. It depends. Um, there are some people who fetishize skin colors, and there are some people who feel like being with people that are a certain skin color will get them the social mobility they desire. So when it's not rooted in love, then I think it's a problem. Um, but when it is rooted in love and that person doesn't see, let me rephrase that, that person loves that person for more than just their skin. Um, and if anything changed with their skin, they would still love them. Um, then there's value in that. But I'm always conscious of people who 
choose because of skin. And I've seen it in action. You know, I have family members who are in interracial relationships and some of them are genuinely in love. And then there are others that we just knew that they would end up with someone that wasn't of the same skin tone of, uh, that they are. I never struggled with loving my own skin. There are plenty times where I have struggled loving my skin. I never struggled with my skin color. I struggled with understanding why others didn't love my skin. I, I don't know when it happened. I think when I was probably in my, my 20s when I began to look at myself and really appreciate the, the greatness and the beauty of, of my own black skin. Uh, my grandmothers on both sides are both very light skinned and my sister's lighter skinned and I'm not. So that was always a struggle, um, especially times when I would go to my Nana's house and she would just talk about uh, how she didn't like things that were so black and whatnot. Oh, this person's like blacker than me and she's like not even close to like even a a brown, brown color. I've had an internal battle with my skin because of a skin disorder that I have. Um, and so as you can see, it tends to cover my entire body and it's all over my legs and everything. And I just used to be like, why is my skin like this? Like I literally hated it. I cried about it. I was severely acne ridden, you know, and just riddled with acne like my entire from the moment I was probably 12 or 13 on up. Then I had glasses, then I had braces. So it was like, dang, like God just messed me up all at one time, all at one time. But yeah, that was like my only real struggle with it was because of the acne. Outside of it, I was like, well, the parts that I can see are pretty, so I had no problem with those parts. And then my mom, no, my dad told me, he said, those are freckles. That isn't acne, you just have a lot of freckles. And I'm like, I, I, here I am, 35, still saying that. Okay, I got freckles, and I'm, I'm, I can, I can handle that process. I can process it that way. What do I love about my melanated skin? I love how it looks in blue light, like, um, like the video by uh, the lovely Lauren Hill. The way how black skin looks just under that ultra blue is just gorgeous. Um, the way how it looks in the dark, the way how it shines, you put you know, any kind of oil on it, or, or it, it's just, even without any oil, even if you're a little dry, it still, <laughs> it still just has just like a glow to it. Oh man, <laughs> we, we uh, there's something about our skin that just brings life and light and energy. Being black is absolutely amazing. I mean, we got rhythm, we know how to sing, we know how to crack jokes, we cook good. My favorite thing about my skin is that when I put on the color green, as you can see in my braids, it just rolls off so perfectly. I think the black skin is some of the most beautiful skin because it, it, it like I was telling my brother, we were talking about something, we were like, oh, you know, Black skin is the only skin that gets extremely lighter in the winter and then in the dark, in the, in the summer, it can get super dark. And then it's just like, literally like a kamikaze of just things that your skin can go through. I know when the winter comes, I don't break out. <laughs> Soon as the summertime comes, I break out like crazy. And so even though, you know, that part of it is annoying, it still to me is just like everything down to the colors that reflect off of it. Um, you know, just how the aging process is a little bit slower. I just feel sun-kissed at all times, at all moments. Like, to think about my skin being like the largest organ on my body, I love it and I embrace it. Listen, this ain't OnlyFans, but underneath these clothes, it's real even and nice looking. So I really enjoy that. And I enjoy other people's melanated skin too. I be like, damn, you know, especially I don't, I have like an affinity for like darker skin. I think it's because it's not as common, unfortunately, because a lot of people, especially like my parents' generation, they often chose, like men often chose a lighter skinned woman just based off of all, all the things we already know. So there are a lot more browner skinned people like me and like lighter skinned people than there are darker skinned people. So when I meet somebody who's darker skinned, first of all, it's sexy as hell, but also just like, rare, 
melanated skin is beautiful. That melanated skin, okay? That drip, that dark, that's gold, that's sexy. That is everything. When I was younger, um, you know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get me a lighter skin husband because I'm like, oh, that's where it's at. But as a grown woman, I just see darker skin men and I am in love. They're beautiful. Beautiful black skin is the most resilient on the planet. Um, I can count maybe two times in my life that I've ever been sunburned and I'm always in the sun. So naturally, I feel like we were, are, were the most equipped to be on this planet. I think that melanated skin is radiant and it's vibrant and it is long lasting. Um, I truly love everything about black skin in all of its shades. If I could, would I change the color of my skin? No. Never. I wouldn't. Absolutely not. Hell to the gnaw. Oh, no. If I could, I would not change the color of my skin. Not anymore. When I was younger, if you asked me that question, yeah. I would have been really, really light or just white, period. But I've grown to love my skin color. Uh, being honest, full transparency, when I was younger, I did, I did have moments like that where I sat down and had those moments where I wished my, or thought my life would be different if I were a different color. But as I grow older and I learn more about myself, I learn more about being black and loving myself, I wouldn't change it for the world. Despite that prayer that I, that I said at seven, which still, I don't know, maybe that's a therapy session waiting to happen. But I still don't know where that came from. Despite that, I would never change it. I would never be um, anything different than what I am. I would never change my skin, but in this one moment, when I was 20 years old, I debated taking skin lightening pills, and you know, I was just kind of like, okay, where's Ambie? I need to lighten things up, because I was told by a record executive that I had an immaculate voice, I had amazing stage presence, but he couldn't market me because of the fact that I was not light enough and my hair wasn't curly enough. And the funny thing is, his wife was the one that found me. <laughs> and so it was just like one of those moments where it was like, but you're a dark-skinned man telling this to a young black, you know, lady, and your wife is a dark-skinned woman. So what does that say about you? I love my skin. I love being black. I am, I identify as pro-black. I feel like our history, our skin, our stories, our art is just so beautiful. Um, so the idea of changing that and the idea of giving up my culture as difficult as it has been to be someone who is black, Caribbean, it, you know, coming from an underserved community, um, being Haitian American, all of that just like informed who I am and just made me more resilient. So absolutely not. No, I wouldn't change the color of my skin. I love my skin color. I even love your skin color. And I don't even know who you are. I don't even know you. But I promise you, I love the way your skin looks. I just love all of it. I love all of it. Light skin, darker skin, medium brown, whatever you call it, I love it all. I wouldn't change a thing. Happy National Melanin Day! 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 Happy National Melanin Day!